About 12 years ago, around this time in the year, out in Helena, Montana, the school year was starting, and so was our youth group at St. Peter's Cathedral. Now, our main group, our biggest group for our youth group was the middle school. And you've heard me talk about them here in this space before, some of the wonderful members we had for that group. They were also young boys, and many of them lived with some level of ADHD. And as anyone who has worked with anyone who lives with ADHD, especially a group of young middle school boys will know, it can be incredibly difficult. One of the things that helped is A, we had a good group of lay leadership alongside my mentor, Heidi, in leading this group of young, almost teenage boys. The other thing that helped is that this group of boys was willing to listen. Even though they had ADHD, even though paying attention was a difficult thing for them, still were willing to take the time to listen. Now, one of the tricks, one of the tools that we used was to take things that these boys were interested in. To take their interests all the way from the Lord of the Rings to the Avengers films. The other thing that we would do with them would be to give them a fill in the blank of what our faith meant so that they could slowly learn what the core of what we were trying to teach them actually was. And the fill in the blank went something like this. God loves, the fill in the blank there, us so much. He came down as Jesus and died on the cross for our sins and rose again so that we could rise with him too. And we would repeat this each week with our youth group. Their willingness to listen was strong enough by the end of the year, these boys could fill in those blanks before we could fill them in for them. Truly understood at the end of the year what was at the core of our faith. Now, these young middle school boys even with their handicap when it came to paying attention, because they were willing to listen, because they were willing to take the time to hear, got this message at the end. And that connects with our theme for today in our readings. Our theme today being teaching, wisdom, Learning. And at the core of that is the core message of our faith that Jesus is the Messiah, the chosen one. Now, what that means, what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah, is very important. And this is where we get at wisdom and teaching. This is where we get at the core of our faith. And it's important for us to understand this. 
Because this is too where we get at that idea of wisdom. Listening to the words of wisdom as we hear in Proverbs. Being good teachers. Hearing what it is that being, is being offered to us. As we hear in James. And unfortunately in the gospel we get a great example of what happens when we don't listen the words of Proverbs, when we don't listen to the words of James. When we get that, then what we see with Peter. Because Peter, like many in his day, Peter understood that the Messiah was a military leader. That the Messiah was going to come in drive the Romans out of Israel and bring about the kingdom of God in this world. That's what Peter and many others thought the Messiah was supposed to be. They thought that the Messiah was the one that was going to bring about an age of bounty, an age of riches, sign of God's love, sign of God's presence, would be that they would have everything that they wanted and needed. Riches of great bounty. Earthly things. But that's not what the Messiah is really all about. It's not what Jesus came here for. What Jesus came here for isn't about earthly riches. Isn't about a great bounty. What Jesus is here for is to come and die for our sins. Jesus is here to die for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. Jesus is here to pave the way for us back to God. Even though we don't deserve to see God face to face. What Jesus points out is that the path of the Messiah is a difficult one. It's not one paved with riches. It's not something earthly. But it does lead us to life. It's the only thing that can give us life. And this message of the Messiah is one that the world does not want to hear. Because this message of the gospel, the good news, is one that condemns the world. The world tells us to be strong. But as Paul tells us, God's word, God's power is made perfect in weakness. The world wants us to prop it up. But instead, our words condemn the world. And so the world condemns us too. For those expecting a military victory, these words would have been a big letdown. And that's where Peter comes in. And it's important to remember that Peter is held up by as one of the great teachers of our faith. Because that's what an apostle is. For those who came here and here this morning, you may have, if you look to your left, seen a listing of the apostolic succession. What that is, is a line that traces our bishops all the way back to those first apostles, including Peter, 
in our church. And often when we talk about the apostolic succession, we look at it as if it's bestowing magic hands on the bishop that gives them power and authority to ordain others, to confirm others. But that's not what the apostolic succession is about at all. It's about teaching. It's about handing down the teaching that goes from those first apostles, those first apostles who would have heard that teaching directly from Jesus himself. That's what the apostolic succession is about, the teaching of the church. And Peter, one of these great teachers, as James sets aside for us, is held to a greater standard, is judged more strictly. And that's what we see here today. Peter is looking at what Jesus is saying. You're like, come on. You're, you're bringing us down, man. You're supposed to come in. You're supposed to be victorious. You're supposed to bring the Romans out of Israel. Not die. You're supposed to be victorious. Not be killed. For that reason, Peter chastises Jesus. And Jesus, in turn, chastises Peter. He judges him more strictly as his disciple and apostle, a teacher that is in him. Now it means something great that the apostles, the early leaders of the church, and that includes Peter, allowed for this story to be told. Allow for us to hear this story about Peter. Because it doesn't put Peter in a good light. But it does help warn us. It helps to warn us what will happen if we don't follow the right path as a teacher for those of us who are teachers. It's a reminder of what happens when we don't follow the way wisdom as Proverbs lays out for us. It's a reminder of what happens when we're more focused on those things that make us rich in this world instead of on the spiritual truths that Jesus is trying to teach. Jesus very clear about what he is supposed to be doing. He's very clear about his mission. He says it very open as we see. Even as he rebukes Peter, we see him telling the crowds what they need to be doing. The very lesson that Peter missed. They need to be keeping their ears open. They need to be paying attention. They need to have their ears and eyes set on the heavenly things. Because, yes, this path of Jesus is hard. And again, he's very clear about that. The path of following Jesus is a difficult it's one that leads to the world hating us. But even though it's hard, it is no harder than what Jesus himself was willing to put himself through for our sake. Jesus doesn't give us a path that is any more difficult than Jesus himself was willing to walk And that path, as difficult as it is, as much as 
the world around us to feed us for preaching the good news. At the end of the day, that good news, that good news of Jesus is the only thing that can give us life. It is the only thing at the end of the day that can save us. Showing us how Peter lived, how Peter was in Jesus' life, showing his worst moments in this world is a great gift because it's a reminder to us to not do the same. It's a reminder to us to take the time to this. It's a reminder to us that we need to set our mind on what Jesus is saying, not on what we would rather Jesus be saying. It's a reminder that sometimes we need to take the harder path than the easier one, set with riches and bounty. This is the message that our youth group all these years ago in Helena, Montana, even with their youth and ADHD, were willing to listen to. And we're called to do the same. The path of Jesus is the path of wisdom. It's the path that James lays out for us. If we can stop and listen, this is how, for those of us who are teachers in the church, how we can do so without being strictly judged. This is the path that can lead us to eternal life. It's the path of wisdom and truth that can lead us to the only thing that will save us in the end. And that is the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is willing to die for us so that we would not have to die anymore, but in Him could have eternal life.